Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Uh, so yesterday we did this one. This was a Patreon exclusive. Again, <clears throat> unique videos exclusive to Patreon go up usually two, sometimes three times a week. You know, and it, they are really nice, and I just can't say it enough. We get to speak a little bit freer, or a lot freer, really. So we, we tend to get m more personal, and we tend to be more open, and that's what I like about Patreon. It, it's almost, it's therapeutic. Well, yeah, great people. <clears throat> great people. And, and I do, again, appreciate so many of our Patreons that are Patreons, and yet they also jump over to youtube and uh cover things over there and put their uh two cents in over there as you know the part of the greater family and thank you guys also on rumble brighty and a bit shoot as well well this is tulum uh mexico and again if you're not familiar with this area it's on the yucatan peninsula and it's it's a big big tourist area uh, there are some amazing sights to see in Tulum. There are great beaches in, in Cozumel and Cancun, and they were impacted by Beryl as it made landfall on its way. Now, Beryl has, has had a very interesting life, you know, going to become the earliest Cat 5 ever recorded in the Atlantic and uh, Caribbean basin. And now just a tropical storm at the moment, although it is expected to uh, strengthen. This is Houston 12 hours ago, and it was already getting some flooding. This is part of what we have going on in this world is just these layers. One layer on top of the other on top of the other of these events that build up and they lead to issues. Uh, man, I wonder if there's any hidden cities under Houston. Uh, that's that's a curious thought. Never thought of exploring that. I know there are some anomalous um, structures and things in Texas. They are there are all over the world. That's the thing that we want to get across. And and I love seeing so many people picking up on this and and running with it because it just seems like there's this awakening going on right now that is really progressing exponentially <clears throat> so where is it going to go it looks like it's going to be kind of a houston event and you know it, it could be a category one uh again we shouldn't just say oh category one that's a nothing a nothing burger at this time it doesn't look like it's going to stall like harvey but we know there are uh technologies in play that can do things and it's really also interesting to see all the people um, that are catching on and watching closely now looking for signals because, again, people like um, Into Thin Air and, and Dutch Sense and so many others have been pointing out these anomalous little uh, items. And now you got everybody, <laughs> at least everybody in our community is looking and saying, wait, 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 what's that signature there? Huh? What? What? Who? Who? What do you do when you're trying? I mean, they did. It, it looks like this has been steered. But what I'm sensing, too, is that there's enough awakening consciousness here on the planet that are those that are awake to what's going on. We can push back with our consciousness and we can actually take on their technology just with our intent. You know, dissolving it, just imagining that technology dissolved can can help. And gosh, y yesterday I was feeling the weirdest things. And, you know, my, I have this barometer head. And if something is being changed or if they're doing something in the atmosphere, I feel it. And yesterday it was so strong. It like took over the whole um, right side of my head. I was in a lot of pain and and that usually happens when they're tinkering with the weather and usually it's just like little sharp stabs but no this was much bigger so it just didn't feel good yesterday it was very 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 odd and it was very artificial and it's like my body knows certain things my body just does things and i don't have control over it but i do know what's going on out there in in the universe and in the atmosphere it's very strange 
Well, yeah, our guides have said that 11 to 15 years it's going to take to totally uh, expose the system and basically push it into an it being the nothing burger. Uh, so again, this is going to take some time, but keep working at it and keep sharing what you guys know. Meanwhile, in California, uh, here over Santa Barbara County, in the Los Padres National Forest, you have a fire. It's burned over 12,000 acres, um, and some firefighters had health issues with overheating, which is to be expected when they got to wear all that equipment. And then some areas you have exceedingly high temperatures. Uh, it, it's a tough thing to put your body through. So we send out our prayers and best intentions to everybody fighting the firefighter, uh, the fires, whether they're wild or not. <clears throat> and also everybody affected by the floods, because again, what we see going on in our own country, our own backyard is going on all over the place. <clears throat> and, you know, we might speak of weather wars, but the wars are against humanity ultimately and it's just waking humanity up so humanity stops fighting itself and recognizes it's being manipulated by external forces the death toll from floods in bangladesh this week has risen to eight leaving more than two million affected after heavy rains caused major rivers to burst their banks uh and so here's bangladesh you know and that's the area uh, a little bit to the east of india and it is prone to flooding. This is in China. Now, what you can't see is, you know, there, this, there was a pretty nice walkway there and a nice yard and everything. It's, it's like six feet under, maybe a little bit more, under floodwaters. So China, yeah, you know, are, is China causing weather warfare on the U.S.? Um, and perhaps, you know, is the U.S. causing weather warfare in China? Perhaps. Ultimately, it's, it, it's one system that is doing this to all of us. And so humanity really needs to learn, uh, as the Beatles said, to come together and recognize why does it cost so much to eat a little bit healthier? As this person says, the markup for peanut butter without poison added is over 100%. This is 429. This is 199. Um, I was going through our, our bills for the month and I've been watching, um, you know, the food prices go up and I know all you guys too. And I just don't know how, say, a family of four can be doing it in these times with a fixed income with no opportunity for making more money because so many people are on salaries or you're on an hourly wage and you're only given so many hours. And it's not like, okay, well, uh, we're just going to work, you know, dawn to dusk to get ourselves, you know, righted. It, it, some people can't do that or they got to go out and look for second jobs. You know, I mean, I, I did when I was raising young kids. Uh, I worked overnight as well as working a day job. So uh, some people have to do those type of things. And, you know, it, it, it's sad because... When you look at it, and we look back to like the 50s and, and even the 60s, the Leave it to Beaver times and all that, you just had the husband working. And when you look at proportionately, um, everything was really cheap in those times compared to now. Now they've made it so that life is almost impossible uh, to maintain a healthy standard of living. That's because they want you grabbing that on the right. They want you saying, oh, I can't afford to just have the peanuts and the salt that's been, you know, roasted and blended together. Uh, no. Yeah. You know, why? Why do you think it is so much cheaper to add all these other items? You know, you got like 10 items in there. You got like two items or three on the organic side. Why do you think it's so much cheaper? It's because they're going to get more money later when you go and visit the doctor, when you go start to, you know, get this script and that script, and that's going to make you a repeat customer. It's guaranteed income. Again, this is how the healthcare model and the food model are one. They're, 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 they're one. And they might lessen profits in one area in order to increase profits somewhere else. 
And, you know, it's it's just sad but true. It is, this is the world that we're in. And you really have to guard your health. Um, they were talking about ex excess deaths in very, very young people in one locale. And the numbers that were being reported were 300% increase. And then new numbers uh, came out or reanalyzing those numbers. They recognized it was a 3,000% increase. That's insane. This system is the most unhealthy system that you can imagine. So that should get everybody saying, what is the real purpose of the system? I know it's heartbreaking. I mean, I, I have grandchildren. Both of my daughters have two children each. And I mean, they do what they can to feed them as healthy as possible. But it is nearly impossible in this world and and to see health conscious moms come on board but then you know their their hands are not in a good position for them to buy all organic all the time it's just heartbreaking and then if you send your children to school well the schools give you even worse food they give you even worse poison you know that's something where i i um i always sent my children to uh, to school with with food because the food at school was just absolutely awful you know so it's everywhere we turn every time we're trying to make an effort to do better it's like they have some way to block that off but don't let them don't let them don't let them don't let them block you from doing better just keep going so if everything's not perfect it's not perfect but it's okay just do better where you can Absolutely. And you have a 12 year old Canadian girl espousing wisdom that you won't see out of most politicians mouths because, you know, by by the time they get to a certain position, they've been controlled by the by the system uh, as they end up having a, a vested interest in keeping the system going because it's more profitable. Listen to uh, her little expose and I, it might echo some, but I, pr I apologize for that. Have you ever wondered why Canada is in debt? Have you ever wondered why the government forces Canadians to pay so many taxes? Have you ever wondered why the bankers from the largest private banks are becoming wealthier and the rest of us are not? What I have discovered is the banks and the government have colluded to financially enslave the people of Canada. The government borrows money from the private banks. They then lend the debtors' money to Canada with compounded interest. The government then continues to increase taxation of Canadians year after year in order to pay back the interest on the exponentially growing national debt. What results is inflation. The government gave the banks the ability to loan out money that doesn't exist in the form of loans. They click a key on a computer and generate the fake money out of thin air. They don't actually have it in their bank vaults. Presently, the banks only have $4 billion on reserve, but they have loaned out over $1.5 trillion. They're freedom and they need to be stopped. I said the following, and I hope that all of you remember this. Never doubt that a small group of people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. So, yeah, a little wisdom from a 12-year-old. Now, we, we did a video um, in 2017 uh, that they gave 86 views to, and it was all about the uh, illusion of the banking system. And so they were saying, Cindy, let me know. I didn't know the term 86, take off the menu, um, that this is something you can't talk about. Um, you know, you're not going to ever change this world if we keep using their system. Now, you know, I'm not an ec economics expert by any means, and uh, I have a distaste for the banking system, which has made life personally tougher for myself. Um, but at the same time, it's because I'm following uh, what the higher self wants, which is, again, ultimately freedom for all from the system, which is enslaving us. I, uh, I would recommend Paul Wallace's books again. Uh, I finished his second book, um, which was really good. And, you know, he is on Fifth Kind TV for those that are not familiar. Um, he is also an author and he's on he has his own channel too, the Paul Wallace channel. I'll put I'll put links in on this video for you guys. But 
He brings up the story and, and he talks about the native Hawaiian legends, which I brought up before, how they perfectly go along with uh, legends from Africa and, and other places too, the Australian Aborigines, Native Americans as well. These beings that took over this planet in, say, the beginning of the, what we would call the Kali Yuga, this is one of the first things they did when they took this planet over and it's it's funny that you know people are waiting for a fake blue beam invasion alien invasion because the alien invasion happened thousands of years ago thousands of years ago in fact i i do think it began in reality with the younger dryas event that was an act of war the younger dryas event was an act of war and then the complete takeover uh, happened after that particular event. What these beings did was they gave us, uh, he says in, in Hawaiian terms, the Hawaiians remembered they were given these tokens and we're told this is what you are going to uh, now barter and exchange with because everybody just kind of bartered and exchanged before. Uh, you want these papayas? I want your mangoes. Well, let's work it out. Two for two, whatever it is. Be and and what happened was they gave these tokens, which cause a reliance on the system. Everything must be uh, paid for through the tokens. And once the system was fully in place, they didn't even have to be here anymore. At first they were here. Everybody wonders, well, where did these gods and mythology go? Well, once they have their system fully in place, they don't need to be here anymore. They could go enslave other places because now they have their fake pseudo-human uh, kings and queens and, and lineage in place. They have their human banking system in place. They no longer have to be here. The humans do the work for them, and they could go off and they could enslave other worlds, and that's exactly what happened. And it really... The key is the banking system. The key is eliminating the financial system. You know, what I what I see is it's it, we're not going to be able to just step out of the system. We can hate it all we want. I, I think those kind of energies are just going to lead us into a bad spot, being angry at something and then not being able to do something about that thing. But, but there's so many more of us than there are of them. So if we step in and take, <laughs> take their candy away and we decide to spend their money on things that are going to make us healthy and make us happy and spend the money on things that are alternative, eventually I see that energy is saturating their system and then we drop their system in the toilet when it's time because we won't need it anymore. But it is going to take for us to step in and saturate it all up and do something we have to do something about it you know we took a long time to get us here it's going to take us a little while to get it out but uh, i'm always trying to think of my health what can i do health wise that i don't need to rely on that system anymore that's how we sop it up you know just like any mess you put a paper towel or a towel or a rag you got to sop up the mess and then do something with it and i i think this visually if that helps anybody with a visual that's what i see us doing yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's interesting because I've shared um, some with my family and all. And, you know, my dad is he was just the quietest guy and he was very, very content. My my uncle would say, you know, uh, Big John is the most content guy he's ever met. And yet, you know, they never owned a house. They've only owned one car. They never had two cars. My my mom and dad, that car. <laughs> The, the the most expensive car they ever bought was about $3,000. You know, I had bought a new car myself when I was a kid, and then I gave it to them uh, to take over when I got something else. Um, and it worked well for them forever. I mean, for a very, very long time. You know, again, they kept things, you know, until... Uh, they were of no use anymore. So, you know, the mindset with my parents was never, ever about money. They, 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 and my dad, I think, did probably even have an aversion to money in some ways. But I, I think spiritually, he was very, very advanced. Um, but, you know, they, they never owned a house again. They never made more than 20000 either of them. 
And my dad worked till he was 75 years old when he died. He was working in a grocery store at 75 years old to, to again, pay the bills. So, you know, this is just um, part of my background. And yet he was as content as can be. And they had a great marriage because they, they never stressed about it. They didn't. They loved each other intently. And I was super blessed to, to, to grow up in those circumstances because, again, you look at the richest of the rich and they tend to be pretty miserable when you get down to it because it's the energy. Um, now, money is an energy. It is an exchange and it is an energy. And I'm not saying money's bad. I'm saying the system's intent is bad. The system's intent to enslave us using that money is bad. We can, with wisdom, um, perhaps actually get ourselves out of the system by utilizing the system where you can. And this was just, I just wanted to share this because it just says if you did have a 401k worth a million dollars, how long would it last? Where? Well, the sum total is uh, it would last the longest in Mississippi, uh, 22 years and eight months is what they estimate that would last. Alabama, 22 years as well, uh, 22 years in Oklahoma. And then you have a few at 21 years like Kansas, Missouri, um, over here in Tennessee, 21 years, 21 years in Indiana as well. Um, West Virginia was 21 years. So you can see Iowa, 21 years. Uh, you, you can find some places where it would last double what it would in Hawaii. Hawaii is very expensive for reasons, obviously, the perfect weather, et cetera, et cetera. Ten years in Hawaii. So it would go more than twice as long in those states. Only 13 years in California, by the way. 14 years in New York. 16 years, seven months in Connecticut, where I uh, grew up. Rhode Island, 17. Taxachusetts, 12 years, nine months. Yeah, you know, again, it depends on where we are because uh, the tax burden is is different in each each state. South Carolina, 19 years. Yeah, I left uh, Connecticut and moved to South Carolina, and I owned a thousand square foot house in Connecticut, and my taxes were like six thousand at that time per year. Uh, for a thousand square feet and then I ended up getting a 2,000 square foot new home in South Carolina with $700 a year in taxes so obviously uh, it <laughs> it depends on where you are and now of course there are other countries out there that are even uh, cheaper yet than the U.S. but hang on for the U.S. because again uh, you know, there's going to be definitely economic challenges coming our way I thought this was really cool too. Um, so let's start over here. Everything is a distortion and what we have to realize, and it's so hard for some people to understand this, the original intent of Yeshua Jesus was a, an amazing, beautiful intent. It was one of empowerment. It, if we are in the system of the, the devil, Satan, the adversary, the system's going to grab the message and twist it. Now, I know, again, almost everybody that's watching our videos are subscribed, and that's not the way it is typically on YouTube, for instance. YouTube, uh, most of the bigger channels out there, you know, half or less than half of the people that watch the videos are subscribed. So what does this mean? This means that, you know, that we're, they've blocked us from any future growth. In fact, they keep whittling... Um, evolutionary backwards on purpose because again we expose the system too much uh, maybe too clearly for their liking the original Lord's Prayer in Aramaic is something very different uh, than what we are are given in our translations and so this is where you, you know seeing how it was originally written is is so different it's not about enslavement and it's not about giving away our will i want to read you the original lord's prayer from the bible which is insane to read because this is the direct aramaic translation that they can tell us and it's beautiful a cosmic birther of all radiance and vibration 
soften the ground of our bodies and carve out a space within us where your presence can abide. Fill us with your creativity so that we may be empowered to bear the fruit of your mission. Let each of our actions bear fruit in accordance with our desires. Endow us with the wisdom to produce and share what each being needs to grow and flourish. Untie the tangled threads of destiny that bind us as we release others from the entanglement of past mistakes. Do not let us be seduced by that which would divert us from our true purpose, but illuminate the opportunities of our present moment. For you are the ground, the truthful mission, the birth, the power, and fulfillment, as all is gathered and made whole again. And so it is. That is not the same prayer. <laughs> no. No, because the system takes the power away from the individual and gives it to the system. So this is clearly teaching, uh, you know, karma, cause and effect. This is clearly teaching to be be aware and beware of the system that's in place. Uh, because we are going to be made whole as we leave the dark age. And, you know, again, this is why there's an instinctive reflex sometimes when you say the term new age. But the new age in uh even in the bible is is really something to look forward to because we've been in darkness mm -hmm. well you know a lot of the new age teachings have been usurped like they do they they every, take every them and they twist them so it is natural when people hear new age they freak out a little bit because they you know on some level they know that there's some issues going on that are not truthful um and that's where we need to really understand what we are reading and don't just understand when you're reading something it's coming from that source that controls you and so many people are indoctrinated it in into such a high degree that if they hear anything but what they believe to be true they get so angry and they get upset and they get inflamed and that just shouldn't be i i believe if you're not bringing harm to another entity, you should practice what's in your soul. Practice being what you are. Practice being that in which from lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, you have put effort into. And, and that should free everybody's souls. No one should be tied down into any belief system. That's just wrong. That's just wrong. Because then you're in, tied into a belief system but you're also having these cravings and these desires. It's like, hey, what's that over there? What what do people do with those cards? Why are people studying the stars like that? And then you, you start smacking yourself saying, no, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. You're calling yourself bad. So you're just beating yourself up. No one should be tied into a forced belief system. And if people feel angry because someone else is not believing them, that's what you call a forced belief system. Yeah, and look at things like here. Why in the world <clears throat> would the doors, the Columbus doors at U.S. Capitol, be 17 feet tall, solid brass, and weigh 10 tons each? You know, that's massive. But again, the reality is, yes, there have been giants on the planet. There have been all sorts of extraterrestrial beings on this planet. And there are beings that are way more advanced than us right now that are living inside the planet and under the oceans as well. And at some point in time, uh, you know, all this is going to be acknowledged again. When you look at some of the places of the world and they say, this is just water running its course. There's nothing here. This is, you know, this is in China, by the way. Um, natural formation or a melted kingdom what exactly caused this right it or were these some sort of manufactured structures uh, this is really super super cool and when you look at it uh, there's some areas on the world that just defy explanation uh, this area in China here especially when you go south central it's really curious, you know, like the White Mountains, uh, the birthplace of Taoism, 
uh, or what's one of the attributed to being one of the birthplaces of Taoism. And in Taoism, you have the legends of the Taoist immortals or these beings that uh, are kind of eternal, but embodied, you know, ascended masters. This is what we are talking about. What, but what again are these beings? And in many cases, yes, they uh, they are extraterrestrials that have been here for a very, very long time or beings uh, like the being that we call Adama that's up under uh, Mount Shasta in what's been called Telos. He is actually what the humans on the planet were in the golden age and he's still here all the all these years because uh, time itself, as, as you might have heard, is an illusion and it's not smooth. Time is not smooth. It's not always going at the same rate of speed or the apparent same rate of speed. It changes with the yugas. Uh, when you see that there's all this like amazing structures out there that they just simply say water erosion, sand erosion, natural formation, no intent involved, yeah, sure. No, there there have been all sorts of beings on this planet. Yes, you know, some of them we found evidence of. I mean, there were so many giant bodies uncovered in, in North America and uh, the United States. Uh, it's in the, gosh, probably millions uh, of giant bodies were discovered over time. But, you know, the indigenous people knew that these beings were here. Uh, we've talked to you about Dali, uh, who is w one of the regular contacts that we have. She was sharing info with Cindy um, because we, we did do a video totally on Dali. Who is, and why do we call her Dali? Well, she, she likes our statues and she will play with our statues as we have statues of the different deities. Uh, again, these these are... In some cases, beings uh, of a very vi high vibrational nature, you know, obviously non-terrestrial in origin, um, and also um, some are, are at such a stage that they could truly be labeled archetypes. And so we'll, we'll find that the statues are moved uh, and we'll, we'll you know leave the room or whatever, come back in the room and notice, oh, okay, well, <laughs> now this statue's with that statue. She came here with her parents as an extraterrestrial uh, refugee. Well, her parents came here uh, to Earth uh, during either the, I think it was the, the end of the Silver Age, because there was a lot more peace. Uh, then as the Bronze Age progressed and the wars happened uh, in, and the invasion happened, her parents were exterminated by the reptilians. And the reptilians, Dolly was sharing, that the reptilians went uh, town to town, city to city, uh, and wiped out everybody. And we're wiping out everybody of a higher, um, more advanced knowledge. So when you see uh, these giants being exterminated, what they were doing was wiping out all the other more advanced extraterrestrials that were here living on Earth at the time in order to leave nobody that could really um, you know, com compete against them. So they were eliminating any potential adversaries. When you see uh, any of the Star Wars uh, films, for instance, and you see the extermination of people living peacefully in these little tribes and villages, kind of just cohabitating with nature, in a very peaceful way. Well, that is our past. That that's the earth. That's the earth. The earth was taken over, and they went, you know, area by area, systemically, systematically, eliminating everybody uh, that could give them opposition, and leaving only those they deemed, you know, non-threatening, that would still provide them um, with what they wanted as far as energy and slave uh, labor. It is really sad and really unfortunate, and it's, you know, you just keep reading the same stories over and over, mainly in the Bible, you know, how how they wiped out, you know, these people and how they wiped out those people. Oh, but by the way, you know, let, let's keep the, the gold and the precious metals and stuff, you know, for, for God. Um, it's just really kind of a mess, and 
thank goodness we're coming to a time where that's getting untangled. We're remembering who we are. We are touching bases with uh, different realms and different worlds. And we are going to one day see um, everything that's in the world that we are in right now. This 3D world, we see, you know, what's 3D? We see everything that's 3D, but we are going to be allowed at some point to see all of the other densities and have a deeper understanding of where we truly live. And I think that's a blessing. Yeah. And, and so what you're looking at is something that's native to Argentina, the Patagonia and Mara. They weigh between 17 and 35 pounds when fully grown. It, this is in Colorado, though. What's this doing up there in Colorado? I, I don't know. I have no clue. It didn't really elaborate. But when I saw this, this got me thinking about the ever-famous jackalopes. Do you remember jackalopes? Oh, that mystical creature. Oh, they're just so ornery, too. Yeah, they could be ornery. you got to watch out for the jackalopes. And this one's a jackalope in Montana. And what the heck is this? What is this? Wow, he looks really cool. Look at him. I'll have all the links for you guys to peruse, as always. So, hmm, what type of creature is this? Look at him. You know, again, if you see something that's unusual, it could be that it's just AI, or just CGI. Or that maybe it's something uh, of the Bronze Age. Interesting how observations change when you're expecting something to be one way and it's not that way. And sometimes we can't see that which is, you know, right under our nose or right over our heads. Isn't that the cutest thing? Don't you just want to yell to the puppy? He's up there. He's up there. He's up there. Our um, our urges, our emotional urges to reach out and and help or show someone something that they just can't see to reach out and lift them up and change their perspective so they can go, oh, I get it now. Yes, we have those urges to help each other, you know, but but when it's time, somebody else will see absolutely thank you guys for being part of the family we look forward to your comments please do share uh liking does supposed to help the algorithms i don't know uh again you know if we're on one of those lists where it doesn't matter or not but it doesn't hurt to try and it, it is definitely a case of uh the system is being exposed let's keep working to awaken others to what's going on so we can have a free and peaceful earth Source bless and namaste. Namaste.